coming to you from the log cabin in the woods. I'm Walter Weyer, and today I'm going to show you my do-it-yourself vacuum switch. So this vacuum switch is uh, my own design. Um, I used a four-gang electrical outlet box as the um, main structure. All of this um, duct tape here is just so that you don't cut yourself on uh, any of the sharp edges and screws that protrude from it. Um, it uh, it's pretty simple. There are um, two separate circuits. Um, the input circuit here where you plug in your tool and the um, vacuum circuit here where you can plug in your vacuum cleaner or a um, dust control air handler. Um, and uh, in between here are the electronics that uh, control it. The way it operates is um, you can uh, plug in the uh, plug in the input. The uh, wire I used is a 14 gauge stranded 14.3 so that we can get the uh, ground in there as well. Um, and it will handle a full uh, 15 amps. And the output is uh, here where you would plug it into your circuit for the air handler and plug the air handler into the uh, vacuum section over here. The uh, reason why I separated them is um, you know, typically uh, a tool that you're going to use uh, will get close to 15 amps just on its own. If you then plug in that uh, same, you plug in an air handler into that same um, circuit, you could uh, very easily go over the, uh, the 15 amps and blow the circuit breaker. Uh, so that's why, to me, it made much more sense to, uh, to break the circuits apart. That doesn't preclude um, putting both of these, plugging both of these into the same um, circuit if, if you know that your tool is not using um, that much amperage and that the um, vacuum cleaner or the air handler that you're using, dust control that you're using, doesn't use that much. Um, so let's, uh, uh, the, uh, the other thing that I, that I wanted, the other specification that I wanted was that um, if we do plug these both into the same uh, circuit, uh, did not want the vacuum air handler to turn on at the exact same time as the tool, as um, most motors will draw lots of amperage to begin with and then um, and then settle. So um, in the case of my uh, vacuum switch, uh, there's a two-second delay just to allow the uh, the tool to to ramp up to uh, speed and uh, lower the amperage, and um, and then the uh, the vacuum cleaner will turn on and settle. Um, the uh, the vacuum will stay on the whole time that the tool is on, and then once uh, the switch senses that the tool has been turned off, uh, the vacuum will continue to run for approximately eight seconds, seven to eight seconds, um, to clear the vacuum hose or the um, the air handler hose or whatever it um, you've got this plugged into. So let's uh, let's test it. In order to test it, I will be using um, a hair dryer to uh, simulate the tool. Um, it needs to whatever I plug in there needs to draw sufficient amperage in order to trigger the um, current sensor. So there's a current sensor that senses when uh, tool has been turned on, and um, once the uh, two seconds for it to settle are complete, then the uh, vacuum circuit will will engage. Um, in order to simulate a vacuum or an air handler, I'm just going to use this. Uh, lamp and uh, once you see the lamp come on then you'll know that the vacuum or air handler has come on. Um, the um, delay relay that I have in there is showing um, dash 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 which means that it's in its uh, standby mode. So it's just uh, waiting to be uh, triggered and uh, the um, the circuit, the um, current sensor will uh, trigger the uh, delay relay and then the delay relay um, will turn on the, uh, the vacuum circuit. Okay, so without further ado, let's turn this on. And there you have it. We um, simulated the tool being turned on. You might have uh, noticed the uh, two um, in uh, the uh, window here, makeshift window. Um, and uh, it counted down, and then once once it had counted down, the uh, vacuum was uh, turned on. Now, uh, once, once I turned off the tool, um, there was there was a delay before um, it started counting down, and that is because the uh, the current sensor uh, takes a while for it to um, to to for the for the magnetic field to, to go down and for it to uh, notice that the tool has been turned off and that there is no more amps um, running through it. So let's try it one more time. Turn it on, two, one, and the vacuum comes on. Turn it off. Still looking for there it is five four three two one, and the vacuum is off. So there, there you have it. Um, it uh, stays on for approximately three seconds before it starts to count down the five seconds. All of those um, timers are um, are available to, to be reset and to be changed. That's it. Well, let's take a quick look around the inside. This is described as a delay timer, and uh, it's really the uh, brains of this particular operation. Um, it takes in power um, there. In this case, it's 12 volts, and um, this rather large capacitor, it's a 1,000 microfarads or 1 farad, um, is, is there to balance out the power um, and to uh, supply power when the relays 
inside your uh, click. Um, this particular uh, board is actually called a YF-11 and it has uh, many program modes which you can set using these keys over here. The uh, output is um, controlled by that MOS FET right there and um, it will control output here so we get 12 volts across the two two pins here. Would have rather had a uh, another relay although this is it's kind of nice not to use because then you don't have to power another relay coil. Beyond the YF-11, we have three other components. Um, underneath this black tape here is a um, power supply, essentially. It takes power from the incoming 120 volts and converts it to 12 volts, which we use to uh, power the rest of the components in here. Um, I have used just a, a little connector here to make it easy to disconnect the power supply from the rest of the uh, components within here. Um, this component is a relay module. It's a 30 amp relay module. They call it a 30 amp relay module. Um, however, the traces, I often wonder if the traces can actually handle 30 amps on there. So yeah, in this case here, I've added some solder to the traces just to thicken them up a bit, have them actually handle 30 amps. But this relay will never handle 30 amps as I have a 15 amp um, plug here. It could have gone with a 20 amp, but I don't have any 20 amp circuits that I, that I use. So the output um, is a 15 amp. And once again, because it is supplied separately from a uh, from its own circuit um, it it can handle a full 15 amps with the uh, 14 gauge wire that's in there the final component is the current sensor here which connects through the hot wire on the incoming leg of the to sense when a tool is connected now it doesn't turn on with uh, low amperages and that is so that it won't come on just because We've got our little power supply there. The output of this particular component is the relay pulling in. And in this case here, this is the start of the whole operation. The um, current sensor here senses a current flowing through the hot wire. And then the relay here uh, pulls in and activates the trigger on our component here, our delay timer relay. This is the guy that does all of the work, as I mentioned before. I believe it has a uh, little microprocessor there in, uh, in the center, which you can program to many different modes of operation. In this particular mode um, that I've set it to, which is uh, P-24, it will delay for a certain number of seconds, and then it will uh, continue to operate while the, um, it senses the trigger. And once the trigger signal is gone, then it will continue to operate for a number of seconds afterwards. The output here actually powers the uh, 30 amp relay module which I showed you earlier the YYG-2 module down here um, I would have preferred a uh, relay to actually trigger this particular module but in this case here since the output is a 12 volt output um, we use it to power the whole module and to trigger at the same time the uh, the trigger here is connected to the 12 volts so that it is always just whenever there's power the uh, relay is on and those are the that's the inside of this particular vacuum switch now we'll talk about uh, some of the uh, design considerations that were used in order to make the um, vacuum switch. <clears throat> um, keep in mind that uh, I am not a licensed um, electrician, and all of this is just for your entertainment. Um, uh, I don't recommend you try this uh, at home unless you are a licensed electrician. Anyway, um, first off, the uh, structure itself. Um, as, I, as I mentioned already, the, I used a, a four-gang um, electrical outlet box as the uh, main structure for, for the project. Um, I really wanted to uh, use something like this, which is... Uh, uh, two single gang um, outlet boxes um, attached together. Um, I was going to, I liked this particular um, design because it's nice and smooth. There are no uh, jagged edges, uh, no protruding screws that uh, you can get cut on. Um, however, uh, with this, it just wasn't um, enough space. Once we put the uh, two um, outlets um, across here, there just isn't enough space in here for the electronics. Uh, for the, um, uh, I'd have to be able to put the power supply and the current sensor in there and uh, the uh, delay timer and the uh, 30 amp relay in on this other side and it just uh, wasn't enough space. So that's that. This is what the um, power supply that I used uh, looks like. Um, it's very compact. Um, it uh, produces 12 volts and uh, only 480 milliamps, um, but it turned out that uh, the 480 milliamps is, is uh, quite sufficient to run the um, three other components that are, are in, the, uh, in the vacuum switch. Um, normally what I would uh, use is uh, something like this, and this is this is what I used in order to uh, test the uh, the system, and I would uh, I would just plug that directly in to whatever I'm uh, building, uh, making, and then uh, and then um, just use the uh, output um, to connect to the individual components. Um, 
The uh, the reason why I, I didn't use it in this case here is that uh, this 12 volt um, adapter is uh, is quite large, and it would uh, take up uh, one of the uh, slots, uh, take up one of the slots in the uh, tool section, and um, doesn't really leave much much space to plug in anything else in the uh, tool section. <clears throat> the reason why I like using something like this, or um, I wall tap, USB wall tap, if uh, the electronics use 5 volts, is because it, it's, it's all self-contained and um, you will see listed and, and so on. So it, uh, it, makes, it makes for a, a very good, safe um, way to supply power to the electronics. Um, in this case, I used one of these and I did have to uh, solder in the uh, AC and the AC there. And I did have to solder in the, uh, the output uh, plus and minus, plus and minus, plus and minus there. So that's that. For the current sensor, I really wanted to use a current sensor that looked like this, something similar to this. Um, the uh, the problem with using a, and this is a Hall Effect um, current sensor, the problem with this current sensor, of course, is that it's not going to be able to handle the uh, 15 amps. Um, I mean, it's, it's, some of them say that they will, and I actually did buy one that would be able to handle at least 30 amps of current. But um, the thing I don't like about these, all right, the reason why I didn't choose one of these is because it needs to be put in line with the current. So the current has to actually pass through here, and um, these um, traces do not look like they would be able to handle that much current. Also, um, the output from this particular sensor uh, is, 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 was not going to be um, easy to, um, to, to work with. Um, it, uh, it, it outputs a voltage that is proportional to the amount of current that it sees coming in, and um, with AC and um, with, with other, other considerations with, as to the amount of, of current and so on, uh, I just did not uh, feel comfortable using a current sensor that looked like that. Which uh, brings us to the uh, type of current sensor I did eventually use. Um, I used a current sensor that looks like this. Uh, it gets powered here. Um, this potentiometer here controls the uh, amount of current that the toroid here um, sees before it triggers the um, the relay. So with this, uh, this the uh, the hot wire um, on the uh, on the input uh, circuit there just passes right through the uh, toroid. There's no break in it. There is no um, current that passes through any of the uh, electronics here from from the input side, from the tool side, um, and uh, the output um, is is uh, the relay pulling in here. So you can use it to, in my case here, um, send the 12 volts to onto the next step to, uh, to trigger the, uh, the timing of it. So this, this is the uh, um, current sensor that I settled on for, for this particular design. Um, here, here was an option for delaying the, um, the time uh, for the um, output to uh, start. And uh, as, as you recall, the reason why I decided to do that is because I did not want both tool and vacuum to be turning on at exactly the same time. Um, so here, uh, this is a very inexpensive uh, part. Um, it gets the power. Power comes on. The amount of delay is controlled by this potentiometer here, and it's uh, it's a very simple tool. the uh, The problem with this particular um, timer, or not really a problem, but a consideration, um, is that it uh, will handle the uh, delay quite nicely, but it did not does not extend the amount of time once the uh, tool is turned off in order to clear the vacuum. Um, now, as it turns out, this particular uh, current sensor does stay on for three or four seconds um, after the uh, tool has been turned off, which might be enough time, actually. But I wanted um, to do something that, uh, that would allow me to adjust the amount of time that the uh, vacuum is on after the tool has been turned off. So those are uh, the considerations for, uh, for the current sensor, the timer. You, there is a, you can buy a timer like this. Um, this particular timer um, would, either, uh, would work either for delaying the, the start of the um, output, um, and, and or it, well, and would uh, also be able to handle the um, extending it for after the tool is turned off, but it won't do both. I could not find a programming mode uh, with this particular delay timer that uh, would uh, delay the start and then extend the end uh, when, when you put on uh, when you trigger it. So that uh, so this could have worked. Um, I could have put this on the backside of of this, um, but I ended up finding that um, YF11. Uh, that uh, ha handled both the delay at the beginning and uh, the extension of the time at the end. Um, you know, and, and there's all kinds of uh, relay modules that you can find. This one here is also a uh, delay timer uh, relay that, uh, you know, once once it's triggered using the uh, the trigger here, it will um, do various various things. Um, but uh, as I said, the um, the delay timer that I ended up using, the YF-11, was uh, was very good. Uh, it met, it met, met my needs um, exactly. Um, as far as the uh, the 30 amp output relay. Um, which does need to go into the uh, circuit, um, and that's why I wanted to use a 30 amp one, even though it'll be a 15 amp um, circuit. These uh, these other relays typically will only handle 10 amps maximum, and 10 amps just wasn't enough for for a, um, a dust collector, um, you know, a substantial air handler or dust collector. So this this has a um, has, has a 30 amp relay. Um, it's debatable whether these traces can uh, actually uh, carry 30 amps or not. Um, so typically I will. Drop, I'll heat these traces up and uh, add solder to them to make them a little thicker. Um, in, in my case, it, it, the most it needs to handle is 15 amps. So, um, I, but I did uh, thicken the traces even just to be able to handle the, the 15 amps. 
Um, I could have uh, just used a, uh, a relay um, in that uh, the delay timer, um, the output from the delay timer is a, is a 12 volts. And so it would have been enough to, um, to handle the coil, to energize the coil. And, uh, and therefore run, run the relay. But I, I prefer using a relay module like this um, because it, uh, it allows more, much more flexibility, right? So I could, you, you put in the, um, you, you power it up here um, on these two uh, pins and then you have an input pin that you can use to trigger. And, it, and you can uh, choose whether you want a high trigger or a low trigger. Um, in this case here, the jumper is set for a high trigger. So 12 volts um, there will, um, will, will trigger the relay on um, and zero volts off. Um, and and uh, um, it has a freewheeling diode, um, which I also like, and uh, various uh, little LEDs here that tell you whether it's engaged or not. Um, so that's the reason why I prefer using uh, these relay modules, is that uh, you also get the uh, isolation with the optocoupler and uh, the freewheeling diode and, and all of the other little electronics. They don't really cost much more um, than, uh, than, than the relay alone. Um, you, you need to be wary. Um, some of these, you know, are not, they're not all created uh, equally, even though they, they use the same design. Um, they, they, they uh, copy each other um, when creating these modules and so on. But, uh, but you notice little things like this here, it says uh, normally closed, normally closed, two normally closed connections. No, that's not exactly right. This one here I, I know is uh, the middle, middle connector, as we can see here, is the normally open. So um, I ended up using the common and the normally open connection in order to power up the, uh, the vacuum um, side of the uh, switch. And uh, that uh, completes uh, most of the um, components that I, I used uh, inside there. If you have any questions uh, with regard to um, anything that you saw in there that you'd like to know why um, I, I uh, produced it that way, uh, please put it down in the comment section and uh, I'll uh, try to answer uh, any questions that, uh, that you might have. Um, you know, keep in mind that this is all just for your entertainment and, uh, and don't try it at home unless you're a licensed electrician. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.